Welcome to Side Effects with an A. When effect is normally used, it's a noun. It's already occurred. Effect is a verb meaning action. Action influences outcomes. I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. We will provoke you to think differently. Side Effects, where problems are defined, solutions exposed. Welcome to Side Effects. I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. And we have a guest with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you guys. Yeah, so this is Alexandra. Yes. Say your last name. I'm Alexandra Paul. Paul. Yeah. Not Alex. Not Alex. Alex. Not as I've corrected already. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's important. I mean, even, you know, we have Dave Holman sitting in here, and, and on his card it says David, and my assistant's name is Victoria, and a lot of people call her Vic, and what do you prefer? Right. So Alexandra prefers Alexandra. I do. And you are from? Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. And I said it correctly so that yeah. I didn't have to have marbles in my yeah, mouth with like Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. Like with with gravel, like Louisville. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's exactly what they say, but yeah. mouthful of rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. We really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thrilled to be here. So, Are you a Cubs fan? Absolutely. Are you go, really? Cubs, go. Yeah. Did you watch the game last night? I did. Well, well, I had a little bit of an early morning to get yeah. here this morning. So I watched all through the night. And when it hit rain delay, I said, I, I can't do it. I'll just wake up to either disappointment or excitement. So when you woke up, how did you find out the Cubs won? I pulled up ESPN right away. Yeah, yeah, it was it. it was right there. Yeah, so it probably wasn't as much as much fun as being in Chicago. No, no, no a little bit of heartbreak not I being there. Yeah. I, I can imagine the city is going nuts. Yeah, I'm my sure wife and I aren't. We're not Indians fans. We're not Cubs fans. And we were watching it in that home run in the eighth when it it was like, oh my gosh, this game is changer. Amazing. But the tarps came out, and we both looked at each other like, I'm out. Right. I'll yeah. find out in the morning. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And being from Ohio. You know, I'm like, hey, I hope the Indians win. But uh, at the end of the day, it was a, just a terrific series. It was amazing. It was. It was great to see both teams. You know, I think good, good team members from all of them. You saw good character. You saw a lot of good sportsmanship. So it was it was a great series. Yeah, but only one team gets the trophy and there isn't a participation award, right? <laughs> there isn't. There you I go. hope it's not held against me here in Ohio. But that's not why we, why we brought you here today is to talk about uh, baseball. We brought you to talk about it's engagement. It's good because I don't like baseball. You don't? I'm sorry. That's why I was silent. Yeah, is that un-American? It is kind of un-American. I, I did watch like four innings of the whole series. I yeah. participated a little bit. Yeah, last night I was with my wife, and she'll probably kill me for saying this out loud, but she said, is this going to go to overtime? Oh, <laughs> the dreaded, yeah. is like, this going nice. to overtime? <laughs> like, hey, like we need an extra <laughs> inning in baseball? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, 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 you're right. So you probably would have said overtime. I know the terminology. Okay. I All at right. least know that. So, uh, But you're right. We're not here to talk about baseball today. Yeah. So uh, I met Alexandra in uh, Cincinnati. Uh, yes. And uh, Alexandra has been with Humana for a long time. And I really appreciated uh, her knowledge and background in wellness space, engagement, and disease mitigation. Yep. Uh, and the strategy that I think what, what, where she's seen this entire thing evolve from where it was to where it is. Uh, and then we just want to kind of poke the bear and talk to her about, hey, what do you see off into the future? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Scott mentioned you're, you're with Humana, but you're with a very specific part of Humana. So talk a little bit about your role there, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I was with Humana about seven years ago is when I started in the national account space and kind of on the medical insurance side, working with groups, you know, claims resolution, all the fun stuff that every college graduate likes to go straight into. Um, but ultimately, Humana decided to really dive deep into this wellness segment. And we, we dabbled in it, you know, partnered with some vendors in the space for a couple of years. And, and at this point, we really decided this is who we are at the core. We changed our company values to reflect it. Um, we really went all in. And we created the joint venture with the Vitality Group and created created Humana Vitality, which is now wholly owned by Humana. But um, when we created that, that's when I went over to the well-being segment and was on that Humana Vitality team, which has grown from that product into 18 different solutions today. So it really does show, I think, the the growth in the well-being segment in across the country, really, in what we're seeing from a trend standpoint, what we're seeing from an employer interest standpoint. Um, it has become a huge area of opportunity in the past five years. Yeah. And so recently, the Vitality program's gotten a little bit of a facelift, right? That's right. 
That's right. We're really excited about that. And on January 1st of 2017, we will be releasing the new brand, which is Go365. Um, We're all very excited about that. Relieve some confusion in the marketplace with the Vitality name. Um, But also what comes with that is an enhanced consumer experience. We really took um, the feedback that we have from all 4 million members on the platform today, took their feedback, what we had heard from them over the past four years, and incorporated that into this new consumer experience so that it becomes easier for them. It becomes more user-friendly, et cetera. And so we're really One of the things I really liked about that is um, when I was listening to you kind of unpack that and talk Mm -hmm. about it was the fact that you don't have to be with Humana. That's right. That's to, right. To get this technology. Yes. And in fact, we have many national accounts that are with Humana Vitality today on a standalone basis. Um, so we really look at it. You know, it's available to employers with even 100 employees and more on a standalone basis. You do not need to have Humana Medical Insurance to have this program. Yeah, which is really important because a lot of times, um, you know, especially with our clients we talk to and all the carriers have different solutions. But as soon as you change carrier, your solution goes away. That's right. And that gets frustrating. So well, what I liked about that... It's hard to communicate to the employees when you change their their wellness or their health management program every year or every other year. I can't even remember the passwords of the things I have. <laughs> right. I mean, the last thing I want to do is remember a new one and learn something all over again. And that's what we liked. That's at least what I liked about potentially this system that could be agnostic, regardless of the carrier. Absolutely. And it's something that we heard from a lot of our clients, too. You know, I mean, they do, especially in the in the more down market space. A lot of them are shopping medical plans every year, every three years. And it's nice to have consistency somewhere, especially when you put so much effort into it. So you've seen this market change um, over the last four years in a big and we've seen it. So we've had multiple vendors come to us around engagement. So I'm sure probably off. about 500, you know, something yes. in that yeah. area. So there's a lot of money in that. There's a lot of VC money. There's a lot of capital coming Absolutely. at us uh, about that. And my opinion is, is they started off as, hey, this has just got to be fun and it's got to be sexy and it's got to be activity based. Which, um, which is okay. Get some attention immediately, but then it seems to fizzle out pretty quickly. The stickiness isn't there. Exactly. It's the uh, sustainability, which right. we talk a, a lot about. So kind of walk us through what you've seen in that world and then maybe where, where you think you are today. Sure. Uh, sure. And then we'll talk about the future of where you think this space is going to be. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting area, and it's interesting because um, there's almost so many different tiers and levels across the country um, when you look at where an employer is on this journey. Um, I have 10 states that I work with, and even amongst those states, it's at a different level for some of these trends in the marketplace. But, um, you know, looking back at it, when when wellness was starting out, which, quite frankly, you know, was way before me, you know, 80 years ago, not 80 years ago, in the 1980s, 30 years ago, you're looking at... <laughs> now you sound <laughs> like my kids. Different. That's what my kids say. A yeah. hundred years ago, Mom, when you were in high school. Yeah. No, Before never. cable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It, back, you know, whenever we were releasing employee assistance programs and looking at these new things that would help people with their emotional, mental, you know, stance. Um that was seen as wellness. And so when we think about traditional wellness, I think when people say that buzzword today, they probably see it as kind of a health awareness type program. And that's where, you know, we had the health assessment or the biometric screens. It was really about know your health. Um, From there, we morphed into an activities based, get engaged, have fun with it. How do we have fun with living a healthy lifestyle? How do we get people to feel that way? And so there's a lot of points-based systems out there. Let's reward people for these healthy activities. Um, and, you know, with, with the Affordable Care Act and with some health care reform, we've seen it kind of morph into having some outcomes built into there, which obviously, as we all know, has become an extremely challenging thing today with, with the regulations and how can we do this. But, you know, it became a hot topic probably Two years ago, I would say, a lot of employers started coming to us and saying, we're considering going outcomes-based. So in all the states that you do business Mm -hmm. with, so we're in Ohio. Yes. Uh, You're not in Louisville. I'm not. You're in Ohio this morning. I am north today. Yeah, exactly. So when you talk about all those markets, and let's just say a scale to 1 to 10, Mm -hmm. so what state in your mind is getting this? Oh, interesting. Um, so within my 10 states that I reference is very Midwest based. Um, and I think probably Minnesota is probably the, the furthest ahead on gotcha. this. Gotcha. Why do you think Minnesota? Um, you know, I think Minneapolis is one of the healthiest cities in the country. Gotcha. Excellent. Now, where, where's Ohio? 
you know, depending on the city, I think that varies. Um, you know, you've got some some healthy cities in Ohio. You've got some very unhealthy cities in Ohio, though. Um, so Don't go there. <laughs> I kidding. won't list. I won't list names. <laughs> I I I I play Switzerland on this one, if that's yeah. okay to say. Um, so you know, I think I think Ohio is probably upper mid of the pack. Okay. I think you're definitely you're not you're not falling behind. I don't see that in this in this space yeah. but of the Midwest. That's correct. Yeah. So when you start to compare us to other states, that, that probably looks a little bit different. That's right. You know, but we get kind of a bad rap in the Midwest. But if you look at it and you compare it to the South or, yeah. you know, there's there's bad habits across oh, the yeah. across the country. If you start looking at even the, the Plains regions and, you know, there's it's, it's really across the board. We all have our states that pull us down, maybe like Kentucky does. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's your home state. I just yeah. dug on myself. I dug yeah, on myself. Absolutely. <laughs> My uh, uh, one of the things that we had talked about before we um, started on air was uh, wearables. Mm -hmm. So um, I wear a Garmin. Yep. And I hear a lot of noise about uh, Fitbits and Apple Watch. Yeah, Apple Watch. All this this strategy. And one of the things you know when it first started coming out, I I love shiny objects. So a new one come out, I buy a new one. I buy a new one, and I've got a drawer full of these wearables. And you add that up, it gets really expensive. (laughs) So you talk to employers, and, and I'll sit down with employers, like, I'm going to buy everybody a Fitbit. Mm-hmm. Right. right. But what are you going to do with it? Exactly. That's great. You're going to give it to them. What, what are you going to do with the information? And are you even going to get it? What That's are they exactly going to do with right. the information? Yeah. That's so exactly what's your opinion right. on, on wearables today? Yeah. And where do you see that moving or evolving to? You know, I think it's a really... Um, I think it's a really beneficial space. Um, and it's a question that we get a lot from employers of, we want to buy people all of these. How do we do it? What do we get? What should we do as your perspective? And I think the wearable space is a is a huge benefit, like I said, to this wellness area because it allows people to understand what they're doing. It allows us to put a fingerprint on our lifestyle to calculate something, whether the steps are accurate to the exact step, whether the heart rate is exact as it would be if you went in and got it checked with the physician. I don't know that that matters to us as consumers. What we're really just trying to to, to look at is something to benchmark. We can see that we did better today than what we did yesterday. And I think that's the value that these wearable devices have brought to us today in the wellness space. I think what you're starting to see with it is the connectivity of wearable devices, which gives us even more capabilities. And so when we look at whether it's your Garmin or your Fitbit or your Polar or, you know, your Apple Watch, whatever it is, the connectivity of that is what really matters. Because not only are people looking at it to track and to see how they're doing day over day, they are also looking at this data as it compiles in an aggregate state. And they're allowing, to some extent, they're allowing this data to be shared and to be viewed by others as well. Yeah, which is really interesting because I think the, the normal person that goes out and buys a Fitbit, mm-hmm. the employer didn't encourage or um, or apply a disincentive. They just go out and they buy it. They do. That's right. And then what's interesting is no one's telling them what to do. But this little thing on their wrist, which starts out with a code that says 10,000 steps is good. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, what do you have your set to? Uh, 10. Yeah. I didn't change it. Oh, yeah. I changed mine to 15. But I if I, if I don't go more than 10, I think I'm a, I think I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> the first time it ever went off, it like that little party on your arm. You're like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how manipulated we are as human exactly. beings? Yeah. I mean, the small little device and a yeah. little buzz on our wrist can make us feel like we've done the best thing. That we've done which is really awesome. important, which, what you brought up is the fact that, I mean, I, I, I bought it. My wife has one. She calls me, Hey, how many steps you get in? And I tell them I'm, I'm at work, you know, and I'm busy. I don't have that much time to work out or, you know, move around. I've got 12,000. You've got 7,000. You're a loser and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But the data on ours today just sits inside of, you know, my app on my phone. Mm-hmm. So you talk about collecting all of this data and the value of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was listening to a podcast um, or a, a video it wasn't a podcast on um, technology advice. Um, technologyadvice.com, they have a lot of information out there. And they were talking about what you're you're saying, Scott, which is the partnership between Apple and Epic. Mm-hmm. And others will 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 eventually go that way. The Samsungs have Sammy and then there's the Google Health app. And um, but Apple and Epic have actually entered into a partnership where if you as a consumer choose, you can share all of your information through your Epic Health file so that it your physician has that information. Before you even get there, they can see what you've been doing, which I think is pretty cool. 
I absolutely agree. I think it's where we're going. I think it's a very, very interesting concept of getting this this wellness data, this well-being data. Um, and I think that goes beyond just your physical health data that you're, you're capturing. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting all of this incorporated with our medical records or somehow even maybe it's going beyond, you know, considering Epic's a huge EMR that's out there, but we've also got a you know, several big ones. And so they're not all talking to each other. Right. How do we even make that easier and incorporate claims data and data from your well-being vendor and have kind of a central hub that ultimately a conversation I was having last week, how do we create an app that somebody opens this app or their physician opens this app for with this member or for this member before they come in and they see the claims data, their well-being data from maybe these wearable devices. They see their, their medical records from the past. There really is no gap. Right. It aggregates it. You know, the other thing they were talking about, and this is just beyond the individual consumer experience or even at the, at the group level, a group experience, um, which is our audience, the employer, um, Globally, they're saying if people eventually will share this data, there's a privacy issue. Right. Some people don't want to share that data. There could be huge breakthroughs in detecting disease states early or treating disease states. Because when you collect data points from millions and millions of people, like someone who gets Parkinson's, these are all of the things that we can see leading up to that. And so if we see these patterns in somebody, we can diagnose that early. Th- this um, this whole theory about diagnosing that for a population, that's pretty cool. I think we're starting to see almost the tipping point of a population changing on their own, which is really interesting because we built this insurance industry or healthcare industry on the concept of other people's money. Most people are waking up to the fact that, wow, this was our money and we have power. And we're starting to see a population move like a tipping point where they're starting to get healthier, irregardless of incentives, disincentives. That's right. You know, I think knowledge is power. And what we're talking about here with wearables is knowledge. And it's amazing to me, you know, you think about whether it's with disease states um, or with just your daily habits. A lot of us know what the right thing to do is, but having that awareness every day of what we're actually doing is what's tipping us maybe to be more conscientious about those choices. And that's been a big thing for us about having a platform that is reliant upon verified data. Um, It really allows our members to have this data pulled in from these wearable devices through API feeds without them having to report it and be held accountable for it every day. So it gives them the knowledge they need without the responsibility of having to own it, right? You know what's interesting, too? There's this quote, and I love it. It says, ignorance is not the lack of knowledge. It's the perception of knowledge. So you talk about that. So we talk about wearables. What's the next big thing that you see? I mean, you're in this space. I saw your platform. It is amazing. I think it's very well built. I think it's very attractive, too. Thank you. So I think as a consumer, like, I liked it. Yeah, Uh, we're very excited about it. Thank you. But what do you see as, like, the next big thing? You know, I... I don't see wearables going away. Um, I think they they transition as to what they look like. You know, some of the fun things that we've seen in Silicon Valley are, you know, um, is it is it smart clothing? You know, yeah. so you're or a ring, gear. a ring. That's right. Or... You know, there's they just they transition. Um, and I think you have to change because I, I'm already hearing people tired of the Fitbit. And, you know, Fitbit has done a fabulous job with their brand and get out there. And, and so they've had to change their device. You know, there's, there's keeping up with the marketplace. Um, so I don't think wearables go away. I think the wearable technology continues to advance. And it might be built into things that we're already using, such as, like I said, our clothes or, you know, we already see it in our, in our devices of tracking our activity. But I think even beyond that, as I'm... As I'm looking at employers in this space, it's it's very interesting to me. We're seeing a lot of going back to the basics. Mm. Um, you know, we've we've done incentives, we've pushed a lot of this engagement, we've we've done a lot of things which are all very valuable. Um, but but what really helps and what really matters, and I think you all have done a great job of it here at McGowan Braybender, is culture. And you know, so if you ask me what the the really the the transition point is right now in this space. It's the executive leadership finally understanding that this is beyond just. Yeah, people possible. smell a motive, right? They, they, they smell it. Do. And if they, if they smell the fact that, hey, this is all about cost, 
this is all about this. It's all about that. It's a turnoff, right? Yeah, right. It's a big turnoff. It's hard. To, it's really hard to move. That's it just creates right. bigger gaps when we're trying to close those gaps between the employer and the workforce. And so I think you really hit the nail on the head, and that's something we've been trying really hard, too, which is this podcast is aimed at, is just getting you to think differently. Absolutely. And think about why are we doing this and for how long and what are we hoping to get from it? And then let's build the plan versus, hey, everyone's doing this, so let's just slap it into our plan and hope it reduces our costs. So as we begin to kind of wrap up, would it be okay if – and I'm going to ask you right now so you can say yes or no – uh, if we maybe could put some examples of Go365 on healthierbirthdays.com, you could send us that information and we could put that out for our listeners to look sure. at. I would love to do that. Yeah, that would absolutely. be great. Was I allowed to say no right now? Yeah. I'm not sure that oh, was really know. an option. You yeah. could. That's why I threw it out there. <laughs> so you could yeah. have. Yeah. Yes, we would love to do that. You Excellent. know, I would love to, to help you guys out and to help people see kind of what this looks like. Yeah, and it's hard. I and mean, Scott has in front of him, you can't see it, uh, a piece of paper that has, I don't know, 150, maybe 200 different um, technologies out there for employers that yep. they can use or partner with or take advantage of to try to help their workforce be healthier. And it's confusing and it's fractured. And so we like to vet those groups that are doing a good job. And we really have enjoyed the program that you guys have had to date. And we're excited for the launch of the new program. So yeah, what I really liked, um, and as we wrap up was go back to the basics, right? Absolutely. What's I've always liked aim small, miss small. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, thanks for getting up early. Oh, absolutely. From it was a Louisville pleasure. Louisville to Dayton, Ohio. We appreciate it. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I appreciate you all and, having uh, me. And thanks for everything that you do because you care and it shows. Absolutely. And it's so a passion. We would uh, encourage you to reach out to uh, to us. You can reach out to uh, Scott at HealthierBirthdays.com or... Or Ann at HealthierBirthdays.com. And we want to welcome... Uh, we want to say goodbye to Side Effects. Thanks, thanks for coming, Alexandra. Alexandra. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening and opening your mind. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach us at scott at healthierbirthdays.com. Or Ann at healthierbirthdays.com. We hope you'll join us next time on, on Side, Side Effects. Effects.